I did uh, add a postscript to, to that uh, design for this particular conference, News Media and the War on Terror, which is, is, is apparently supposed to explore the difference between a journalist and a library scientist and a media scholar. In peacetime, perhaps, that may be a bit difficult to perceive. All three have a fair amount in common. All three are collectors and analysts of information in a very broad sense. Much of the routine journalism also could be described as collecting or archiving information for routine distribution. A lot of what is the journalism that exists in our media uh, contains uh, material such as in reams of material on uh, stock markets, on, uh, on corporate uh, activities of one kind or another, on uh, sports statistics, and all of that really has to be lumped together and described as journalism at one end of the scale. At the other end of the scale, we have something like information about war. And in that area, it vividly illustrates the difference between journalist, library scientist, and media scholar. Of these three, and this is one of the, the differences that separates out journalists from the other two, of these three, journalists are the only professionals who are expected to die as part of their job. Why is this important? Because it reveals the absolutely essential nature of real journalism. Journalism that is reporting at close range, eyewitness at best. Journalism that can change the course of events. Journalism that matters so much that journalists will risk death to gather it and disseminate it. And this isn't just a, a kind of theoretical obligation that is, isn't called on frequently. The International Federation of Journalists recently <coughs> calculated that in the last 10 years, more than 1,000 journalists and media staff, media personnel, have been killed in the course of their work. All journalists share in that work even those far removed from danger. Unfortunately, not all journalists live up to these ideals. The example of the coverage of Afghanistan and of Iraq to some extent. A national tragedy that Iraq occurred as American journalism retreated from its tradition of extensive professional foreign coverage, particularly in the Middle East. Be not because of what was going on there politically, but because of changes in the newspaper industry. We have, have seen an incredible weakening of the large American news networks, which, uh, which uh, covered uh, the world, basically, for consumers of news in the United States and, and in other places. So we've seen this weakening of the American TV networks at a time when that kind of information is more necessary and more valuable than ever. And I think that's a, a tragedy. Despite that, of course, support for the war has been declining steadily among ordinary Americans. And we have a role here, I think, to some extent as well, because we live uh, on one side of a very porous border, and we are in a unique position to provide Americans in various ways with information that they don't get from their own media. And I'm quite conscious, although I don't, didn't have time to get any statistics on this, that uh, this, the uh, American audience for the CBC, particularly news and current affairs, is fairly significant, particularly in areas that are close to the Canadian uh, border. Internationally, uh, we dither, trying to pretend that we're really nice guys while our casualties mount. The embedding of journalists, of Canadian journalists, has weakened our inability to see and report objectively from, Af from Afghanistan, and I think that we could actually discuss that a little bit, because it's completely changed the nature of war corresponding, if you want to call it that. What is the difference between a journalist, a library scientist, and someone from media studies? 
Well, in the course of finishing up these few scanty remarks, I came across uh, an item on October the 18th, just a few days ago. Uh, on the death of Bill Boss, a name that perhaps doesn't mean anything to you, when I started out as a journalist in Canada in the 1950s, that was a huge name to conjure with. But I doubt that any of you would recognize it. He was, he died at the age of 90. He was uh, the most famous Canadian press war correspondent during the Second World War and also the war in, uh, in uh, Korea. Uh, he was uh, the epitome of foreign correspondence, a man with a mission, as one of his uh, fr friends said, one of many articles about him said, who roved the world's hotspots in goatee, khakis, silk scarf, and black beret. The late Pierre Burton called Bill Boss one of the most trusted and familiar newsmen in Canada during his career who ate censors for breakfast. And I think probably that's a good quote to use as a starting point for a definition as to why journalists are not like exactly librarians and media, media scholars. Thank you. Thank you, Peter.